Let's see. So good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to our virtual nature talk of, um, from Ruby Zavala. I'm really glad that you could join us today. Before we get started with Ruby, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Phil Hardberger Park Conservancy. The Conservancy is a member-based nonprofit that bridges the gap between San Antonio and nature by bringing free nature programs to the public. So um, they also protect the natural habitat of the park through advocacy, fundraising, and promotion. If you enjoy the programs that we offer in the park, please consider supporting the Conservancy through a donation or by becoming a member. And visit philhardbergerpark.org to learn more. So this talk will be recorded and shared on our website. So please turn your, off your video and mute your microphone. That will help reduce background noise. But if you have questions for Ruby, please voice them in the chat. And I will, um, I will read them aloud for you so that we can make sure those are answered by Ruby. So today we have Ruby Zavala here to talk to us about growing herbs for attracting pollinators. So Ruby, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Katharina. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, so this is the third year in a row that I've given this uh, presentation at the uh, Folk Harburger Park uh, Butterfly Learning Center. And uh, every year has been different. The first year we had to move because of the weather. And the second year I was able to uh, teach it in the Butterfly Learning Center, which was awesome. And now this year it's a webinar. So <laughs> it changes every year, but uh, I'm still glad to be here and uh, still happy to share um, some information with everyone today. And, and uh, um, whether you're a novice gardener or more of an expert gardener, I hope that you can learn uh, something today about this presentation and take it back uh, and uh, start growing that garden in your backyard or in your community garden, um, wherever you're at. Uh, that's all we want you guys to do is get outdoors. Uh, uh, the other day I saw someone uh, posted something on Facebook that said, uh, gardening is not canceled, everyone. So uh, even though we have these uh, COVID-19, no face-to-face -face restrictions, everyone is social distancing, um, we can still enjoy the outdoors. We can, we can still go to uh, Phil Harburger Park and go walk around and enjoy nature. Uh, we can still grow gardens in our backyard and, and um, grow things like herbs to attract these pollinators and to um, provide a natural habitat for our uh, local birds and bees and butterflies um, right in your own backyard. And so <clears throat> um, this next picture that I'm showing you guys, this is where the, butter the Butterfly Learning Center, if you haven't um, been there before, it's located near the Veckler uh, Dairy Farms off of Blanco. And um, uh, it's a, a very, very uh, beautiful uh, area, natural area um, that is used for educational purposes. So if you're new to San Antonio or if you just haven't visited this part of the park, I highly recommend it. Um, I know right now it's a little chilly, but hey, uh, it's in the afternoons, it's going to warm up. And I don't know about you guys, but I actually plan on going to Phil Harburger Park this afternoon to go enjoy it with my little doggy. And we like to go for walks there at Phil Harburger Park because it's so beautiful. Um, this is just another angle of the Butterfly Learning Center. And in the background, you can see um, uh, raised beds. And that is the children's vegetable garden at Phil Harburger Park. And um, if, you, if uh, you didn't know, we have a children's vegetable uh, garden at Phil Harburger Park, uh, right next to the Butterfly Learning Center and the Conservancy Center um, and the Veckler Dairy Farms. And uh, this is just an educational opportunity for families to get outdoors and uh, grow some vegetables. And uh, we have uh, also the Junior Master Gardener program there, which means that we have uh, lessons for the students to learn about gardening, horticulture, agriculture, um, all sorts of different uh, subjects to uh, incorporate into the garden and um, make learning fun outdoors. 
Um, so if you're if you have some students that are interested in joining a garden like this, please contact the Phil Harbor Park Conservancy. And they can get you more information on how you can get your students enrolled. So just wanted to share a little bit about what I do. I'm the Youth Gardens Coordinator for Texas Agrolife Extension Service, Bear County. And uh, I'm in charge of the Bear County Youth Gardens Program. I joined the ranks of Nana's. Ruby, I muted you for just a moment just to make sure everybody is muted. So okay. There you go. Thanks. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm in charge of the Bear County Youth Gardens program. And uh, under that large umbrella is smaller programs like the Classroom Gardens program and uh, the Junior Master Garden program, Learn, Grow, Go program, Children's Vegetable Gardens, both at San Antonio Botanical Gardens and at Phil Harburger Park as well as special events that we uh, promote programs at. And so if you uh, know students or if you're a teacher and you're part of a school and you want to have a school garden or you're looking for ways to enhance your garden that you have already, um, the Classroom Gardens program is a great opportunity for that. And you can contact me and I can help you to figure out which program is best for you. Um, also the Junior Master Gardener program. Um, which is a great opportunity for students to go through the program. They learn different lessons and at the very end of uh, the program, they can earn a certification and buttons and all sorts of fun stuff uh, to be recognized in this internationally recognized program. Um, and, and as well as the Learn, Grow, Go program, maybe you wanna learn more about nutrition and gardening. Uh, this is an excellent program to join in. And again, if you have students that are interested in gardening or entomology or nutrition or, or anything like that, you want to enhance their learning, um, be sure to contact me and I can help guide you to uh, which um, program is the best fit for you. Um, and that's this is kind of my job. That's what I do in Bear County. That's that's uh, so. And if you ever have any questions like that, um, you can always contact me, and I'm happy to help out. So uh, let's see. There you go. Okay, so um, let's start with uh, our presentation, and let's ask ourselves, what is an herb? And if we think about what uh, what an herb is and uh, the definition of an herb according to a botanist it would be a small seed bearing plant with fleshy rather than woody parts or would be short for herbaceous be trees shrubs annuals vines and more primitive plants like ferns mosses algae lichen and fungi they normally have a uh, a flavor to them a fragrance and can be used for medicinal or healthful qualities. Uh, also in the economic and in industrial uses, pesticidal properties like citronella and uh, coloring materials as well. So if you uh, were to define what an herb is, it, botanically, this, is, this would be the, the definition for it. Now, a more common definition of an herb. So when we talk about herbs, we think about the, the herbs and spices that we have in our pantry or the herbs that we're growing in our backyard. It can be a plant or a part of a plant that is valued for medicinal, savory, or aromatic qualities. And so uh, we think about something that's very fragrant or something if you have an upset stomach, you can take some, eat some mint, right? And it'll help you settle your stomach. Um, so things like that uh, uh, are um, what we normally think of with, when we talk about herbs. And I mentioned before, we have a pantry full of herbs and spices. And so um, spices are also aromatic, right? And we use them in cooking, can be used for medicinal purposes. But what's the difference? What's the difference between an herb and a spice? They, are they the same thing? Or are they, we just, how do we identify uh, which is which? Well, it's just the part of the plant that we're talking about. 
An herb normally is going to be the leaves or the stems of the plant. And the spice is categorized is, is uh, the seeds, roots, flowers, or bark of a plant. A bark uh, like, like cinnamon. Right, cinnamon comes from the, the bark of the tree, so it, it's um it's just the part of the plant that we get that um, herb or spice, and that's how we know which one is which. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about more common herbs. I I want to talk about herbs today that are easy to grow, that are fun to grow, that are beautiful, that are going to enhance your landscape, as well as attract pollinators and help, uh, help provide uh, a food source for uh, butterflies and bees. And so um, we're uh, gonna just talk about a, um, a handful of herbs today. And if you're interested in other herbs that we don't mention today, you can always contact me after the presentation and I can help you out with that. And uh, we have lots of great resources with Texas AgriLife Extension Service. And so uh, again, if, if uh, you're thinking about an herb and I don't talk about it today, you're always welcome to contact me and we can discuss it after today's presentation. And um, normally with this presentation, when we were doing face-to-face -face programming, um, we had a hands-on activity. And so <clears throat> we won't really do a whole hands-on uh, component of it, but I'm still gonna show you the supplies and uh, everything that you need so that you can do the uh, activity uh, later on um, uh, after the presentation. And uh, it's just a great um, resource that you can use uh, uh, your supplies, your herbs directly from your garden. And uh, if you have students, it's a great way to teach them motor skills and a little bit about um, uh, crafting and an entrepreneurship. Okay, so why should we grow herbs? Well, they really do give you your biggest bang for your buck. They, they have so many benefits, including health and, a, and, a, and aromatherapy and culinary uses. Um, if you're trying to reduce salt in your diet, using herbs, uh, when you're cooking, it's a great way to do that. Uh, it'll still give you a nice flavor uh, to your food uh, and you won't have to uh, use as much salt. Um, they're attractive in your mixed beds. Uh, they, the leaves are so different and the textures and colors and shades of greens um, and flowers are just such a beautiful uh, ad addition to your landscape. Um, There's some, um, herbs that I actually like to use as cut flowers. So like my basil, I uh, cut them and I put them in little floral arrangements and I can use them in my house to decorate my house and, and they smell great. And so uh, it's uh, just a, a really great plant that you get so much use out of. Um, of course, they're fantastic for attracting pollinators. So they're not only beneficial for us, but also for our, um, our pollinators. And uh, they're easy to grow. They can uh, tolerate full sun or partial sun. And uh, they're tolerant of average soil. So if, uh, if where you uh, live, if you want to plant in ground, if uh, the soil is not too great, like uh, I live on the northwest side, so my soil is not too great out there, but uh, the plants still do really well. They, they, uh, it, it's, um, they're, they're tolerant of, of um, soil that might not be so great. Um, there's also a wide variety of cultivars, so tons of different types of basil and, and rosemary and, and, um, different varieties to choose from. If you would prefer to grow more native species in your landscape, um, that's these options are great. Like there's wild dill or echinacea. All of those are going to be a uh, native species that you can grow in your landscape. Or if you want more of um, different varieties, different looks, different leaves and colors, um, there's also those options as well. <clears throat> um, you can start them from seed or from cuttings or divisions. And so uh, that's one of my favorite things to do with my herbs is to propagate them. 
and they're so easy to propagate. And uh, every year I'll take clippings of my rosemary and basil, and I just put them in a little cup of water and, uh, and uh, they start to sprout roots. And then I can give them to my family and my friends and it's great. Um, I see a question in the chat from Norma and it says, are there herbs that are more deer, deer tolerant? And, you know, unfortunately, um, I don't really know any that are deer tolerant because the leaves tend to be so tender. And so the, the deer really do love, <laughs> love that uh, uh, stuff. And uh, especially if uh, there's a drought, um, the deer are gonna eat a lot of different stuff. But what you can do is grow your herbs in containers. And uh, if you have a, 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 a large area and you do have deer uh, where you live, uh, live nearby, you can always grow your herbs in containers closer to your house. And that might help to uh, alleviate the deer from coming on to near close to your home to, to eat the herbs. Um, but yes, I know it's, it's very hard with deer because they, they will eat anything <laughs> really, they will get, they will get into uh, your gardens. Um, and so, like I was saying, they, they grow well in containers as well. If you can't put them out there and you don't want to risk the deer, uh, uh, getting a hold of them. Ruby, we have one more question from oh, yeah. Faye Smith. Yeah. Um, Faye is asking, they're wondering, uh, will this talk be relevant to the United Kingdom? Um, well, no, I'm gonna be um, talking mainly about uh, San Antonio area, uh, Texas area of um, plants. So I'm not really sure the, the climate or the zone level of where they're at in the UK, um, but it, it's not uncommon that they would grow um, herbs like these, because I am going to be talking about um, more common herbs. Uh, so it could be po uh, uh, possible, but if they want to contact me after this presentation and give me more of a specific location in the UK, we can try to figure out the zone and then try to see what grows well in that area, if that's okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Ruby. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I have a little game for you guys and we're just going to play guess that herb. And I know everyone here is an expert on herbs and I'm going to give you guys some easy ones and some hard ones. And so the herbs that I'm going to show you guys, um, I want you to guess what they are. And this is a great uh, activity that I love to do with students in the school and we get to learn about uh, how to identify these herbs and what to look at and we get to use all of our senses when we're together to uh, figure out what this herb is and so uh, can everyone uh, see my photo I'm going to hold up the first one here my video can everyone see that if you can can you type the name of this herb in the chat Chat box. Oh, <laughs> nice. Good job. Good job. Oh, 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 you're so smart, guys. Rosemary. Rosemary. Okay. So, what's our next one? Let's see. What about this one here? What's this one here? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold up the rest of them. And I want you guys to keep uh, typing them in the chat box. Good job. Good job. Okay. What's this next one? And so I know you guys can't smell them, but you guys can tell the difference, right? Between the shape of the leaves and even maybe the color, the color of the leaves. Okay, let's see. What's this next one here? Okay, we're going to go over the answers together at the very end, guys, so don't worry about it. Okay, what about this one? What, this one, the, the leaves are like more like little feathery. feathery. Okay. 
Okay, 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 good, good job, good job, guys. Okay, just a few more, just a few more. How about this one? This one might be a little bit more tough, right? A little more tough. But look how different the leaves look from the first, that other one I just showed you, like, right? So we can tell the shape of the leaves, even the color, the shade, the shade is different, right? Good job, good job. Let's see. This is next one. So the leaves look really different on this one, right? What do you think this one is? Okay. okay good job. And this is our very, very last one. Look how different this looks. What do you guys think this one is? All right, all right. Good, good job, good job. We have some uh, herb experts in the chat in, with us today. I'm very happy for that, good. Good job, okay. So the first one that we went over was rosemary, rosemary. And this one has more of a like a piney a piney scent to it, and you can see the 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 texture and the, and the leaves are uh, very very different. And um, I like to use this one a lot. I'm going to show you the activity at the very end. We're going to use rosemary. Okay, the next one was chives. This one was chives, and um, these are just more of the common herbs that you would find at the grocery store. You can grow them in your backyard. Uh, very very easy. Um, one thing to remember too is that herbs are seasonal. A lot of them are seasonal. So the next one was was basil. I um, would have people tell me that, uh, oh, they can't even grow herbs. They can't even grow basil. And I'd ask them, well, when are you growing them? This The basil is actually, it grows well in warm weather. So when the temperature starts to drop like about now, it, it's, it's normal. It's natural for it to die back. The next one was mint mint we go right here <clears throat> the next one was dill that's the one that someone said fennel it looks very close to fennel but yeah this one was dill and i guess the way that you would tell is if you would smell it because you know the dill has more of like a a, a pickle pickle scent right D dill pickle versus the um fennel which has more of like a a licorice scent to it Okay, and then our next one was thyme. That's the one that has the little tiny leaves. And uh, let's see, what's our next one? Oh, was sage. Sage, this one right here. This one, uh, you know, always reminds me of Thanksgiving time. And our very, very last one was our bay leaves, our bay leaves. And so all of these ones that I showed you today, you can grow in your backyard. And they, they might not, um, be uh, useful for attracting the pollinators, but they're still uh, very, very uh, useful ones that you could use for uh, cooking or anything else that you have in your backyard. So let's talk about the ones that are useful for attracting pollinators. Um, the first one I wanna talk about is the dill. And um, this one is a really fun one to grow, uh, especially if you like uh, pickles like I do, or uh, if, you're, uh, if you like to grow, um, uh, not grow, but uh, can or cook your own um, sauerkraut like I do, uh, you can use the seeds from the dill to flavor your sauerkraut. And uh, uh, let me see, uh, regarding your comment about dying in the back, can they be made year round if planted in containers and brought inside? That is true. You can, you can bring them inside if, uh, um, if the temperatures get cooler. It could be possible if you keep them in a container. Yes, yes. You just have to um, watch out with the watering. Since you're bringing them inside, um, possibly water them less. Don't water them as much. Um, something like basil right now. Um, it, it does it does die back in the cooler temperatures, but also it gets big, it gets really big. So if, if you have a, a big pot for it, um, it gets about you know two to three feet tall. If if you have the room for it to bring it inside, maybe you have like a sunroom or something indoors, um, you can definitely bring it inside. Um, 
uh, if you want to keep it small, you would need to keep pinching it back. Um, but that, but you, you won't get any flowers on it. You won't be able to bloom that way. So it, it is possible, but it just depends on how you're using it. Um, so uh, with the dill, like I said, both you can use both the leaf and the seed for culinary uses. Um, also uh, plants, uh, herbs like cilantro, it's the same thing. You can use the leaves and the seed for culinary purposes. Um, it is a cool weather plant. So uh, you would wanna plant this about um, maybe September, October, so, and it'll do well uh, in these next winter months. Uh, we had a freeze here in San Antonio, maybe uh, I think twice already this year. Uh, I mean, this past few months. And uh, so you'd wanna protect it from, this, from the freeze. Um, and it will go to seed rapidly in hot weather, which um, it, it's, it's your preference. If you can see the flower there, it has a beautiful yellow flower on it. And so if you wanna grow it for the flowers, uh, which could also be a nice nectar source for pollinators, um, you can do that as well. So it, it's, uh, it's just very versatile and however you wanna grow it, it can be a, um, a resource for you, you or, the, or your pollinator friends. Um, it is a host plant for swallowtail. And so um, one thing to remember about growing these herbs, uh, they are really good for um, culinary purposes and for us. But one thing to remember is that if you're growing the herbs, these caterpillars are hungry, guys. They are going to eat up your plants. And so if you're growing things like dill or even rue, which is another um, pollinator plant for, for a host plant for swallowtail, uh, you need to grow enough of it. And I mean a, a large amount of it. So let's say you want some to flower and you wanna collect the seed. Well, you have to have one that's designated just for that. And then there's another one for uh, the pollinators. And um, it, it does require full sun, yes, and really good drainage on soil, yes. Um, it, but it, it is still a great plant to grow. Um, and then again, just protect it from the freezing temperatures. And so um, if you have a, your area designated for your uh, butterfly garden, make sure you grow lots and lots of it. Um, there's been so many times that I receive phone calls or emails asking, oh, where can I find more uh, dill or milkweed, you know, for the monarchs? Um, because I had um, 20 caterpillars on my plant and they've eaten it down to a little stick and, and now there's no more food. And then they start to attack each other which is not good, we don't want that. And so um, <clears throat> that's just one thing to remember is that if we're planting these herbs, we need to plant enough for ourselves or, or if you're just planting them just for the pollinators, um, just make sure you have enough uh, for the, the pollinators. Uh, and uh, you can tell right away, I mean, the, the caterpillars will, will eat this uh, plant up and um, which is good. I mean, that's what we want to do. We want just to provide a resource for our, for our butterflies. Um, so just just uh, uh, think about that as we talk about the next uh, herbs as well. Um, echinacea. This one is such a beautiful plant to grow in your garden. Um, so you can either direct sow the seeds, or it can be a transplant. Um, it's common name is the purple cone flower. So um, it, it's um, a, a beautiful, beautiful flower. And um, uh, it is a host plant for the silvery checker spot, which is a picture of that butterfly right there. And um, it blooms from June to October and it prefers sun, but it can tolerate low shade. I know someone had asked about full sun for the dill. If you have more of like a shaded area, um, you can grow the echinacea in there and it should be, it should be fine. It might not have as much as many blooms as if it was in the full sun, but it'll still bloom uh, well and, and it'll still uh, provide the nectar source for your, um, for your uh, pollinators. Um, <clears throat> this website uh, right here is, uh, um, I want to talk about Save Our Monarchs in case you're looking for um, different plants. Um, that to attract 
you know, certain types of butterflies, I visit this um, website right here, saveourmonarchs.org, uh, and it has lots of great information about, um, about what to grow and when to grow it as well. Um, let's see, what's our next one? Uh, parsley, another host plant for a swallowtail caterpillar. And you can grow a curly leaf or Italian. The, the swallowtail uh, are attracted to both. And um, you can start it, uh, seeds indoors or outside. Um, so, but one thing to remember though, is that this is a cool weather plant. And so you can you can grow it maybe indoors right now, but you'll have to leave it indoors. But that you know, if you want to grow grow it for the caterpillars, you have to put it outside. So it, it's kind of you know you got to know when to grow it. So if you plant this in your garden about September October, it it'll be just fine, and it'll start to grow and um, become a, a larger plant even in the the cooler temperatures and. You could even get some swallowtail caterpillar on there. I don't know if you can see on the bottom picture is um, a little egg, a little egg from our swallowtail caterpillar. Um, and another, this website that I got these pictures from is joyfulbutterfly.com. And it's a great resource to, another resource to know um, which plants to grow for um, your pollinator friends. Um, and uh, again, um, parsley, like our echinacea and our dill that we talked about earlier, are really easy to grow in your backyard. Uh, if you're if you're a novice or an expert gardener, these are these are ones that um, anybody can grow in their backyard. Uh, our fennel. So someone had mentioned fennel earlier, like our dill. It does look very very similar to the dill, right? With these uh, wispy fronds uh, on the on the plant. Um, this is another cool weather plant. So um, out of the ones that we had discussed, uh, the echinacea is the one that you would want to start right now. You can start it on seed or, uh, or you can wait until about um, April, May, uh, or even as early as the last, the frost frost, which is usually about February here in San Antonio. And, uh, and then you can start planting these for the spring and the summertime. And again, the dill, the parsley, and the fennel are going to be cool weather crops. So you want to start thinking about these maybe in summertime. And then you can start growing them for the fall and the, the winter. Because remember, they, they like more of a cool weather. They don't really like the warmer temperatures. Um, this fennel has more of an anise flavor. And you can use the fronds in soups or things like that or any sort of a culinary purposes. Um, you can see our little swallowtail caterpillar on there. And um, it, it will attract pollinators if it's uh, allowed to, to flower. Um, and it can self seed. So that's another great uh, thing about uh, these herbs. A lot of them, they will uh, come back on their own. And I have some pictures here that Catherine also sent me. This is uh, the fennel that's growing in the Butterfly Learning Center right now. She just took these pictures maybe about a week, a week or, or two ago. And uh, this is the fennel that they have out there. You can see that it grew, you can see the brown stems and um, it grew when the cooler, uh, the, war uh, the warmer temperatures uh, came by, it started to uh, die back and then um, now it's growing back in these uh, cooler temperatures. And so um, you can see our little tiny stem right here coming back out out of these um, uh, browner dried back stems. And so once it's, 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 it's established, it's a great plant to have because it's minimal care and uh, doesn't require a lot of attention and um, it can, it can uh, self seed and it'll start to grow back um, every year. Okay, so these next two, basil and rosemary are the next two that I'm gonna talk about. And um, these are not host plants, but I wanted to talk about these because they are more of a common type of herb that people like to grow. And if you let them bloom, will provide a wonderful nectar source for our butterflies. And so uh, the basil, like I was saying earlier, is so easy to grow. It, it does love um, the warmer temperatures. So remember like the echinacea 
and this basil, you can start growing them uh, now or possibly in February, maybe after the last frost, that would probably be better. And uh, easy to propagate, tons of different varieties to choose from. And whichever one you choose, the flowers on them are, um, are a great source for our butterflies. Um, you can uh, uh, plant, you can start them as seed inside. And then uh, after a few weeks, then you can uh, take them outside if you uh, would prefer to have them outside in your garden. So one thing to remember when we're starting herbs or any sort of plant with seed, we need to think about what a seed is. So a seed is a little tiny baby plant. That's one thing we need to remember. We need to take extra care for our seeds. So sometimes when I work with schools and, and we're planting um, seeds in the garden, whether it's herbs or vegetables, uh, sometimes the seeds don't make it, but because we are watering them too hard with the watering can, the water hits it and it just disturbs the area too much of where the seed is growing. So one of the best, thing to do, the best things to do with growing seeds is to get um, something to help it germinate. So uh, I don't know if you guys have seen at HEB, they sell uh, eggs in like a clear plastic egg container, egg carton. Uh, I like to get those because then I like to use the containers and they have little compartments in there and I fill each one with the soil and put the seed in there. And then when you close it, guess what? It's a, it's its own little greenhouse. And um, saving money, you don't have to go out and buy a, a little germination box. You can just use anything like, like, uh, like the egg carton. Um, when you open it up to water it and you wanna keep the soil moist, you can mist it uh, with a spray bottle and then close it back up. So what a seed needs to germinate is warmth and the water. Uh, because inside that little seed is the little embryo and it needs that water to help it burst out of its seed coat. And so that's what we're trying to help it do. So remember when we are planting whichever type of herb, whether it's um, echinacea or dill or basil or anything, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we are um, following directions on the seed packet, first of all, but also giving the seed the best opportunity to, to grow. And a lot of people ask me, uh, well, what's better to grow, seed or transplant? Well, it all depends on your resources. So $5 will probably get you one plant, one herb, one, one um, uh, any sort of plant that you get at, at a local nursery or anywhere versus $5 will get you maybe about two or three seed packets and inside each of those seed packets is about 50 seeds. Um, and, and it just depends if you are, um, uh, I'm sorry, what was that? I saw a picture of basil germinating. They used clear umbrellas from the dollar store over a whiskey barrel. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, you can get it as creative as you want about uh, germinating, however you, you can do it. Uh, and whatever resources you have. So uh, with seeds, you know it's gonna take a lot longer and you need to have that sort of growing area for the seeds, right? Um, versus transplant, you have the plant, it's already grown, it's done, you know, and it's, it's, it can easily be established wherever you put it. So it just depends on the time, the money, the resources that you have on which is better to grow, either the seed or the transplant. It's just, uh, it, you have to look at your own situation and see what is best for you. So the next one, rosemary, um, <clears throat> like I was saying about the basil, uh, the flowers, if you let them go to flower, uh, they are an excellent nectar resource for uh, butterflies and bees. They, they love it. Um, they love it when the flowers are clustered all together like that. Um, so that they can um, get all the nectar that they can on just a one, one shop stop, you know. And um, there's lots of different varieties of rosemary to choose from. And for this one, since it's not a host plant like the basil, um, you don't have to have as much of it. 
Remember, if you are planting it to, for it, a host plant, you need to make sure you have an adequate amount of um, dill or, or fennel or whichever a uh, host plant that you're growing, rue. Uh, you need to make sure that you have enough of that because the caterpillars, uh, if they run out of a food source, will start to attack each other. And that is not good. That is not good. We do not want that to happen. Um, the rosemary prefers uh, well-drained soil and the stems and leaves can be dried. And I wanna talk about this also because we're gonna be using it in our little activity right now. And I'll show you guys right now how we're gonna use it. And um, it can be grown in containers or um, outdoors. And like someone said with the herbs earlier, if you want to grow them year round, you can bring them indoors and then just watch, uh, be careful with the, with the watering. Uh, especially with rosemary, they do not like wet feet at all. They do not like it. And so you need to be really careful um, on how on um, watering. Um, one uh, tip that I like to use when I'm watering plants that I have indoors is I use ice cubes because they'll melt slower and they'll allow enough time for the roots to drink up the water and they won't oversaturate the, the soil with water. Um, which could potentially lead to root rot. And so um, again, ice cubes, ice cubes is, I mean, they just throw a couple in there and um, as they melt, they'll start to water and uh, the, the soil and, and help the plant. And, uh, you know, maybe do that once or, or, or maybe a, a day, maybe every other day, uh, just depending on, on your plant. Um, another thing to remember is that um, the symptoms of overwatering are the same as underwatering. So kind of got to, you know, watch your plant, you know, listen to your plant a little bit and see what's going on there. Did I watering too much? Not enough. And uh, that, that's just part of um, working with the plants that you have, especially indoor. If you're leaving that, if you have them indoor in containers, you just got to, got to watch them a little bit closer. Okay, all right, so now it's time for our Junior Master Gardener activity. And uh, like I was saying, this one is such a fun one to do with, uh, with your littles that you're working with. Um, <clears throat> so I, I did forget to mention that um, when I was talking about the other herbs. So one great thing about these herbs, the fennel, parsley, um, they're safe to grow around littles. And I mean, uh, young ones, uh, toddlers. I work a lot with uh, pre-K for SA and um, other schools that incorporate early childhood education and uh, they want to grow things that are safe for the kids to be around and they want to they want to attract the monarchs but they can't have the milkweed and so they're looking for alternative plants that are safe to have around children um, and, and can still attract pollinators. And uh, so that's why um, I like to recommend these herbs because you can still enjoy them um, and provide a resource for your butterflies. So um, for the Junior Master Gardener activity for the herb sachets, um, this one's a great one to do because uh, you can use the resources from your garden and uh, create something that's fun. You can either, if you have um, a school garden that uh, you have like fall festivals or um, an opportunity to sell a few products and raise a little money for your school garden, um, this is a great one to use. And so um, it's just uh, pieces of fabric. And you can see here that, um, I have a needle and we just sewed it halfway shut. And if you're a quilter or if you have just spare pieces of fabric, um, maybe you have like an old t-shirt or something like that. And uh, you wanna still use the fabric. You don't wanna throw it away. You wanna recycle. Um, you can create just a small piece of fabric like this, sew it. You can see here that I sewed the edges right here. And then in the middle of it, we want to put our dried herbs. And so this is some rosemary that I got from my garden um, last night. 
and uh, it still has it still has a very um, a strong scent to it. And so we take off the rosemary. And so this one dried uh, naturally when um, I, I knew that I, I wanted to dry some of my rosemary. I still have some growing in my garden, but there were some that I wanted to dry out. And so I just let it dry out naturally, uh, which I, you know, I stopped watering it. And, um, and then I just, uh, once it turned into the sticks like here, I can harvest it and collect these leaves. Another way to dry herbs is by cutting them if you have fresh herbs um, like these right here. You can also dry these if you have a dehydrator or you can just hang them and they'll dry out naturally. Uh, and uh, once they're dried, then uh, you can use them in a project like this. And so you collect the dry leaves and then you can uh, put them in the little sachet and then um, after you sew it shut, then you can create something that you can either be a gift or you can sell it. And this is another one that I made. You can kind of uh, have fun with it. And in here, and here's the rosemary. It smells really nice. And uh, it's just a little uh, keepsake from my garden. Um, of course, I, I love to press flowers as well from my garden. And it's just a, a, little, um, a little trinket sort of, which you can say for, um, for, from your garden. So when is the best time to prune rosemary? And when does one cut it? Well, um, rosemary, it, it can grow year round. You know, it's very um, tolerant of either hot or cool. I mean, it's, it, it'll, it'll, it just loves to grow. <laughs> it's just one of those, it's gonna do its thing. It loves to grow. So anytime that you wanna use it, I mean, um, depending on the variety that you have, it can grow up to two, three feet tall, um, or it can uh, remain a, 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 small, a small plant. So, and, and there's also trailing rosemary, as well as rosemary that uh, um, has long straight stems, much like this one that I'm showing you today. So anytime, anytime, if it's, if it's growing, you can cut it, use it however you want to. Um, <clears throat> normally uh, when I, um, cut back my rosemary, like I, I, I try to make sure that I have a purpose for it. So if I'm cutting it, I wanna use it, you know, and, uh, and then I'll let it grow back. And so it just, it just depends. So you can do it at any time and then just with clippers or scissors, at, or if you wanna just pull the leaves off, you can just pull the leaves off. And so uh, you can see, I just got the leaves now and you can leave the stem on there. It, it's, it's your call on it. Um, I do like to let some of my rosemary bloom though. Like I was saying, we wanna provide a nectar source for our pollinators. And so I have several different rosemary in my garden. Some are blooming, some are just for the leaves and some are, are used to dry it out. So it just, um, it you know depends on your usage. And um, how, how long does the smell last when dried? Well, I mean, it's still pretty strong. I mean, um, I can't say for sure. I, I don't think it would last a year or anything like that, but it, it does, um, it, I even, it, it still smell, it, this must have dried out um, when the freeze came. I think that's when it dried out. So it's been about a week or two and it still has a pretty strong smell to it. And so it, it's, um, I think it just depends. It also depends on the quantity. So I just have a little bit in here, maybe just like a, a little pinch of leaves, but I'm sure you could pack it even more with different ones. You can try different, herbs, a combination of herbs. Um, you can even use mint. If you wanna dry out the mint, you can put that in there. Uh, so it just, it just depends on the quantity, the quantity of it. Um, oh, that's a great idea. Uh, comment, it says, I love using it for wreaths or use it as a skewer for chicken. That's great. Yeah, the, the rosemary, will, 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 you can do that. And um, the stem is pretty solid. So you can stick on here veggies or chicken or things like that. So um, again, back to the activity is, you know, it's just a small um, keepsake, fun keepsake that you could use and, and uh, or sell, you know, uh, we want to teach our children about entre entrepreneurship, opportunities to learn about money, how to maybe start your own business one day. I mean, that that's one of my favorite pastimes is going to the farmer's market and everyone there is selling 
the supplies that they grew themselves, which is amazing. And um, any way that we can aspire children to, to, um, to grow or to um, you know, learn new things is great. Uh, one more activity that I have in here that I wanted to show you guys. So this one's another fun one with the herbs. Um, this is just making a bath salts. And so this one was using um, Epsom salt and baking soda. And so this is just a bag of Epsom salt that I got. And um, we do one part Epsom salt, one part baking soda. This is just a, a tablespoon. And I have uh, um, some muslin here. Let me show you the muslin real quick. Sorry, not muslin, um, cheesecloth. And um, just cut out a few squares of it. Put the Epsom salt, one tablespoon of Epsom salt, and one tablespoon of uh, baking soda. And um, again, this is just another fun activity to do together um, at, at any age, I think, really. And uh, we kind of mix it together in our cheesecloth. And then we can use um, either our fresh or we could use our dried herbs um, together. And so I have my dried rosemary and I have my uh, fresh rosemary. Either one would be fine depending on how soon you use it. And uh, what it is, is just like a little uh, bath bomb. And uh, we put it in our cheesecloth like this. And then we tie it up super tight, super tight. And then we have um, a piece of twine right here, piece of twine, little string, piece of string. And then we can tie it up. And again, it's another, you can either sell it at the garden, at your garden fair, or um, give it as a gift, homemade gifts. Um, I love giving homemade gifts for Christmas. Everyone in my family gets my little homemade gifts from my garden. And it's just a bath bomb. So with the Epsom salt, baking soda, and the fresh herbs, it smells really nice. And so we can put it into a foot soak or a bath. And um, the Epsom salt and the baking soda dissolve in the water. And then we're left with the herb in the cheesecloth, which we can later take out. And uh, again, it's just another great way to use our herbs um, for, um, for our, our you know, um, aromatherapy. And it, it's just um, another great way to use uh, herbs from your garden. Um, ooh, tea, yes, you can make tea from the rosemary. Um, so these are pictures, more pictures from our Butterfly Learning Center. And uh, just wanted to show off these pictures that Catherine took again a few weeks ago. And um, we'll notice here that we don't have much blooming, but that's okay. We want to leave this area as natural. So if you're growing these herbs, the dill, the fennel, the echinacea, um, the basil, remember we said they all have growing seasons. Some of them grow in the warm weather, some of them grow in the cooler temperatures. And that's okay. That's what we want. We want something growing year round in your natural area. So you can have one area that is uh, designated for your butterflies and your, your bees and uh, pollinators. And you can have one area, maybe if you have um, uh, more of a landscape area, but this natural area, we really want to leave um, it natural. You really, uh, I mean, um, you can cut back a few things if you'd like, uh, but you know, it, it's best just to leave these, these plants where they are. You, you can come and you can prune a little bit of dill and, and use it and, and a little bit of, a, of rosemary or anything like that. But um, really we want to designate these plants, like I was saying earlier, because the caterpillars will come and they will eat that. <laughs> they will eat up those plants. And so we want to make sure that they have enough space as well as their own area to grow. Um, <clears throat> just a few more pictures from the um, uh, Butterfly Learning Center. And so these next two that I'm talking about are not herbs, but I wanted to throw these in there because they do grow at the Butterfly Learning Center. And if you are thinking about incorporating more of a natural area um, where you're at, um, these are really good plants to have um, because they're part of the SAWS rewards. 
I don't know if you guys have heard of that before, but SAWS will actually give you, I think $150 to incorporate these plants into your landscape. And when I saw these pictures of frog fruit, as well as the bloomist flower, I really wanted to highlight these because um, all you have to do is sign up for the SAWS rewards, attend a few classes, and then um, SAWS will give you coupons so you can go buy these plants and put them in your landscape. And um, the frog fruit is a, an excellent host plant for the Fayon Crescent Spot, Buckeye and the White Peacock. And if you're looking to get rid of maybe some turf or um, you have an area that it is just soil and you wanna prevent that soil erosion, um, this is a good ground cover. It only grows about three inches tall. And so you really don't have to mow it. And uh, again, you wanna just leave that natural area alone anyways, right? And um, it, it's, uh, it's just a really great plant to grow. It takes about eight weeks to establish. Remember, we wanna make sure these are established before they start to grow on their own and reseed on their own. Um, and, and, uh, and so this is just a really fun one to have. It's not, these are not herbs that I'm talking about actually, but I really wanted to highlight these because these are excellent plants to have. To, to incorporate possibly with your with your herbs at home and the, the well as the blue mist flower and you can see it in the background there it's the little puff balls those are the flowers and this is what it looks like when it's in bloom um excellent excellent plant to have will re-establish on its own um and so it's it's just an excellent excellent plant to have in your in your butterfly garden um, I had a question from Ruth do you have recommendations to propagate rosemary so Really, when I take the rosemary, let's say you got a stem um, from your plant. I like to take off these bottom leaves like this, right? And so you just have this stick here. And uh, what we wanna do is minimize the, the, we still want it to do photosynthesis, right? Through the leaves, but we don't want the plant to spend too much extra energy um, on, on keeping these leaves alive. What we wanted to do is we wanted to focus more on growing roots. So this is this is pretty good right here. Just leaving as little uh, leaves as possible, but just enough so that it can still photosynthesize, right? And then um, I like to put it in a cup of water and eventually the roots will start to sprout just like that. Or if you want to, you can put it in a pot of soil Remember, we wanna keep it moist. And the way that we can know if the roots are growing, if it's growing in soil, is just give it a little tug. And if it starts to um, feel a little tight, uh, it's not moving, that means the roots are growing or it's trying to establish in there. If it's loose and it's coming out, then there might be something wrong. And um, you can try a different type of medium, growing medium, maybe more of something more of like a potting soil, like, um, with finer grains in it. Um, you can use things like vermiculite, perlite, um, which is just a, a medium that, you know, uh, it, it's like a, it, it just allows water in there. It doesn't have nutrients like the soil does. It's just a, like a, a solid material that'll hold the water. And um, that's really it. Um, you can have it indoors, like on your kitchen window or your table or anywhere. Um, still wanted to get some light though. And uh, that'll be your, your best bet to propagate this rosemary. So remember, just try to leave very little leaves on it. And uh, whichever way you do it in a cup of water or in a pot of soil, it's, uh, it's easy to grow uh, that way. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're almost done. We have one minute left. And um, these were excellent question got questions, everyone. And uh, if you have more questions, uh, you wanna um, know more, uh, maybe about a different herb that I didn't cover today, um, you're always welcome to email me. Um, if you wanna contact Catherine or the Phil Harburger Park Conservancy and you wanna get in touch that way, um, or um, maybe I can, I can put my, I think I can put my email in the chat box here. There we go. And so uh, you're welcome to contact me at any time and I can help you to, um, uh, figure out what what it what you're trying to grow or or how to um, oh yeah I, I just put my email in there and so um, you want our, our website uh, I think it's just bear just 
tamu.edu. That's our county website. And so, um, yeah, and contact me, find me. And uh, again, if I didn't uh, cover something that you were interested today, please, please, please email me and I can get you that information uh, that way. Today, I just wanted to keep it basic and have a little fun with our little projects, our little bath salts and, and sachets and things like that. And, um, and so also, if you guys have not seen me talk before in presentations, you'll know that uh, one of my favorite things to do with our kids and our adults is to sing and dance. So I can't see you guys right now, but I know you all are going to be uh, getting up and stretching and singing along with me. So this is one of my favorite songs to sing. It's part of the plant to the tunes of Adam's family. And <laughs> all right, jazz hands, I like that. And so, and so it's gonna go parts of a plant, parts of a plant, parts of a plant, parts of a plant, parts of a plant. There's roots and stems and leaves, flowers, fruits, and seeds. You put them all together, you get the parts of a plant. All right, everyone. So that one's for you. You guys can uh, enjoy that anytime if you wanna uh, sing the tunes of Anna's family. <laughs> it might be stuck in your head later on. You can be saying, why am I thinking of that? Well, it's because you're thinking about the parts of a plant and we're all learning together. So I just wanna say thank you everyone for joining today. And I hope you have a little fun. I hope you enjoy your weekend and get out there to Full Harburger Park. Maybe I'll bump into you there later. <laughs> I'll be walking my little doggy out there this afternoon in this beautiful weather. So get outdoors, everyone, grow, grow your garden and have fun. All right, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Ruby. And thank you everyone for joining us for this talk. If you're interested in learning more about Hardburger Park and the conservancy that supports it, please visit philhardburgerpark.org. The conservancy is a member-based nonprofit that relies on donations to support educational activities in the park. So if you're able to give $5 or $10 to support programs like today's, we would really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Bye. Bye.